I had a comment asking to show you how to make the gangways. So I'm going to go over the connectors and height standards that we're using for TCP. So this is your normal train wheel. Train wheel assembly medium. To get the floor of your wagon, we put a block in here just above the train wheel and that gives us access for the pipes and any pivots. So any of the functional stuff goes down here. And then this block is the floor. And the width of this is 13. 13 is the widest that we go with the Fenny train. If you go wider than that, you're going to hit stuff as you go around some of the corners if you're a bit of a longer train. So it's just one block in the middle and then six blocks out to the side. Then the connector. We use electric connectors to connect all the wagons and trains. This top one is for electricity only. And the second one, or the middle one, is for the data and the main power. And then the fluid connector on the bottom is an optional thing if you want to be transferring fluid from a tender, like what I'm doing with a couple of my trains. The top one here is also optional. The role of each connector is this middle one takes all the TCP data and sends it through the train. So it would connect onto here and then send all the data through this wagon and then out through another one into the next wagon in the train. So that controls all the brakes, all the lights. If it's locomotives connected to each other, it, it controls multiple locomotives from whichever one is uh, set as the master. This top electric connector, it only transfers powers for the motors. So let's say that this set of wheels here is my locomotive. So the main engine and power is coming from here. And then this one is my passenger car. What I can do is put a motor to power these two wheels and not an engine, just a motor, an electric motor. And then if I have this electric connector on this passenger wagon, and I also had one on the locomotive, you would connect the generator's electrical output into the motors that power the wheels and then into this top electrical connector. And so it's going to send electricity through to this one, which can then come to the electric motor that would be on this passenger car and power these two wheels. So you can give yourself more grip and more power spread out throughout the train. The connector we use mostly is the compact robotic pivot. You can use just the normal robotic pivot and set it to 50% power that'll help it snap back into place. If I try and push it, you can see it's wiggling around a little bit, but it always wants to snap back into its default straight position. You want to place this, I mean, somewhere around this position. And if you're using the fluid connector, then you're going to have to use a hinge or some kind of, maybe like a fluid pivot or a hose. It gets kind of messy when you start using the fluid connector. But compact pivot there, and you just want it to be on that block above the train wheel probably because this top row where the floor is is where your gangway goes so that when you're walking around on the floor the gangway floor is all lined up uh, we'll take this back into the editor so you can see if i look at the merge tool the pivot that has the connectors on it also has all of the gangway on it and if we look at the top, top down, you can see it's cut out. So that helps connect multiple gangways together. On the left hand side, you do a gripper and on the right hand side, you do the track. I take this wagon here and rotate it. You can see how they line up and they'll line up perfectly. Let me cut away the top part of this and it might make it a bit easier to see. So basically what you're doing on top of this pivot, this piece that moves, you're going to be doing probably two to start off with, give yourself a little platform. And then if you cut away these two outside corner pieces, you can place a gripper on the left and a track on the right. And then you do a wedge in the middle directly above the electrical connector and then fill in the gap here. And that's why you get that shape to cover everything up and match it all up. 
then you want to bring the walls right to the end. If you're building an enclosed gangway, you'll go up seven and then put a wedge at the top and cover that up. So now you've got a seven high walkway. Then you do your wedges at the top and you copy the same shape that's on the bottom with the wedge onto the top. Realistically, to be compatible, all you need is that bottom piece. So all of that stuff above doesn't really need to exist. What I've done here on my oil, oil burner train is I've gone up four blocks. So it's the same height as any railing, but it works the same. I think I need to go to the other side to disconnect this. So here I'm using a hinge and that lets me get my fluid connector to come through and then up a pipe and into the locomotive. And same thing on the tender, it goes into the hinge and then up into the tender. And yeah, I'm only using sort of the bottom half because I've got two outdoor sections. I've just cut away a bunch of the trains so we can look at this a bit more closely. And the logic we've got here, I'm using a 1x2 controller with some custom text in here, but essentially this is a NOT gate. This middle connector, the middle electrical connector, that's your main TCP connector. So what we're doing is we're checking if that is connected, and then from the output of this NOT gate, we're connecting that into the release for the gripper, the release for the top electrical connector, and the release for the fluid connector. This way when another train tries to couple with this, the two top and bottom connectors are always gonna be receiving their not signal because the main connector isn't connected, so they will always be in release mode. So inside you can see I've just got main logic. So I'm saying, when I say main logic, I'm talking about the main TCP logic into a not gate and then the auxiliary electrical connector, which is the top electrical connector. This helps with getting your alignment correct. If you didn't have this, your top connector might try and connect to the bottom connector and start pivoting the whole gangway up a little bit, and it gets all crooked and out of alignment. This middle electrical connector is the right height to be compatible with TCP and WABSIM, it's been at this height for pretty much everything, I believe. If this were the ground level, it's the fourth block up is where that connector goes. Even if you don't want to use TCP, if you put your main electrical connector here, you'll be compatible with pretty much all the trains that have existed before and probably all the trains going forwards. So when you're connected, it looks pretty seamless. You can sometimes see a little glimmer of it coming through. Here I am on the open gangway on my oil burner locomotive and it's tender. We'll go for a bit of a drive and I'll show you how much this moves around. One thing to note is originally I had this connector on my locomotive connected to my rear axle because I thought that it needed to be moving with the wheels. But that ended up swinging this part of the gangway on the locomotive much further around and it was impacting the locomotive's main body. The hinge on the tender is connected directly to the main body and that's pretty much the way you should do it. And I've connected the one that's on the locomotive directly to the main body and it's working a lot better now. Just connect it to the main body. So as we're taking off here, you can see it sort of starts to pull away a little bit. That's because the pivots are moving a little bit and they're getting a little bit wobbly. It's still totally usable though. So you can see as we go around some corners, it really starts to get out of shape. But I should be able to stand in this and everything should be fine. Stormworks doesn't mind too much collision. And these aren't really colliding too much. If you find that you're doing this and it is colliding too much, you can try and use some wedges. Wedges have a little bit of a different hitbox and they will collide and clip into things a little bit more than a standard block. 
Currently my locomotive set speed was I think over 200 kilometers so on some of the corners the gangway is going to be very violent but it's still totally usable. There's not too much more about gangways that you can do. If you made them longer they might not work so well. Um, so yeah just remember to use your middle connector on the fourth block up from the ground and that is your main connector. The top and bottoms for TCP are optional, don't need to exist if you don't want to use them. And then make sure your gangway is connected to the top of the piece that can pivot and the other part of the pivot connected to your main body. And it should all work out. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.